Hey everyone, so finally getting around to uh, working on this John Deere A again today, so I'm going to be putting this transmission back together. Um, everything on that gear looks good. So if you remember, this bearing here has that snap ring, and that'll go in there, and that gear will feed in from the inside and uh, I'll get that lined up in a minute and that's not such a big deal right now um, we've got this cover that goes over it and uh, it's important when you make your gasket of course make it so that this is clear in here I mean I would suppose technically you only need a hole but uh I got that all cleared out and made my own gasket. I use the Aviation Permatex gasket maker. There it comes in this bottle here. I like the smell of this stuff, as weird as that is. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and get that on. I'll put these pieces on the outside here once I get that piece on so that I don't lose them. And we can start working from the inside. All right, I always like to point out, and I didn't there, the, the purpose of this gasket here is that on the letter series, this is engine oil that runs to the first reduction gear cover and drains back to the crankcase. So that helps maintain separation between engine oil and transmission fluid. Uh, so you want gaskets on all of these items here on the letter series. On the numbered series, it switches. This all went to transmission uh, fluid, and so you would want seals to prevent, uh, you know, oil and things from your, your main bearings from entering the, the transmission fluid via your first reduction gear. So just note the importance, depending on, you know, what tractor you're working on, they, they did change that. Uh, so I'm going to wait to put on the lock wire to make sure everything's back together and I don't have to take anything apart. I realized um, this bearing here, which if you remember goes on the end of this shaft and is what is driven into that gear in there. I wish I would have uh, put this in first, but oh well, well, it'll just have to pound in with that. Okay, so it turns out I could just insert that bearing in there, one in there pretty lightly. And you can see I've got the shaft started here. I've got the gears on. Make sure you got them in the correct order. And we're going to slide this in, get it into that center there. And just uh, start beating the thing in there until we can uh, get that joyful snap ring back in all right guys you have no idea how frustrated I have been uh, I just skipped probably at least an hour of my time trying to figure out how to get this piece in there um, into that bearing it just did not want to go I tried pounding it in <clears throat> before I had the shaft in got it started but it didn't like to i tried putting the gears in such that you know this uh the bearing and all that was lined up holding it tried pounding on the end of the shaft wouldn't go um what i ended up doing and i'm not sure if it made a difference or not so this gear goes in here and i don't know if that held it straighter or what but once I put that gear in there and then pounded it, it worked. And it, I mean, it took a sledgehammer. But, uh, all right, got that done. Now the shifter forks. And, uh, yeah, I'll be done with the transmission. All right, guys, so if you recall my last video, talks about how these dowel pins here don't have holes in them so you can't put wire in it to hold it up so what I've done is I took this pin 
and I was able to compress that piece and that pin is holding it down so that I can slide this on the shaft. I got the shaft started over there and make sure you get it in the groove um, of that piece. Uh, the first gear and then as I pound the shaft through it should hold that continue to hold that pin down and my pin will pop out and then just keep sliding it through and uh, do it one at a time after I get this one on and this pin comes out I'll go do it with the other one all right so my plan with the uh, little piece of shaft may have worked but it just didn't seem like it was so I reverted to I had this piece sitting around um, to get this to work I've been utilizing this flat since it you know recesses from the shaft a little bit so wherever the ball is so say on this one the ball is coming from this side when I say the ball the rounded part I put the flat towards it then I reached in with this and you gotta line it up in this hole and then you'll feel it you'll push and you'll feel it compress the spring and while I was holding it there with one hand I pounded from the other end of the shaft and tapped it through and then once it gets started you know it'll ride the flat and then this is a small enough jump that it will you know go in even more and uh, and then ride the actual shaft and then when I got to the next one I rotated it because you'll see like here I needed the flat um, you know towards this while over here I needed it almost 180 so as I keep going through I just rotate this shaft then to get the flat where I want it eventually we'll get that flat lined up for this so one more all right so there you go I can you can see I Got this flat now rotated up, so we'll hammer that the rest of the way through. Put our set screw in. I forgot to mention a minute ago, don't forget your snap ring to put in there uh, when you get that shaft done. And then that's it. At that point, you're ready to put the top cover on. And we'll make sure um, you're in neutral. It's a little off right now, so I'll get that fixed here. Then the top cover can go on. Um, see about making up a gasket for this. And uh, yeah, the, just have to work on first reduction gear and that cover. And but then I gotta, if you remember, I gotta do that with the pulley because that wheel's too close and what have you. So I'm not sure I'll do that in this video or the next one. I almost forgot. Don't forget the cotter pin here. Uh, to get that in the easiest, I just rotated the shaft. I use the bolt on the end before you put this set screw in. I uh, use this, so in this case, if I was hand pounding it through this way, I tighten this bolt and then keep going and it'll rotate the shaft. I hammered it straight down and then actually as I turn this back left to turn the shaft, you know, spread out the end. Put my, uh, made sure this was good and lined up then. Put my set screw in and that is ready to go. All right, so I'm about to put this cover back on this side, and I just want to uh, note, kind of important, uh, this hole here and this hole here, they feed oil to these bearings. It's kind of a splash into a trough on the inside, and then and this feeds in here. So kind of important that this gets clean or stays clean. You don't... Uh, you know gasket over this and you look at the cover you can see well, it's upside down how it has those grooves to uh, account for those holes um, yeah and you'll see this this gets kind of rusted here because well that's the top and that's where moisture would draw up and things um, so may want to clean this out you know while you have it apart like there was some gunk in here in the very bottom and uh yeah keep it clean okay guys so i think i'm ready to install the top cover again i put the oil in that i had drained out of it now 
basically two important things to this is one, your high-low selector. We want to sit in there when we land it. And this plate here. I know it was kind of weird to get off, but I understand it now. So this plate here actually goes in between your forks. Kind of the purpose of if you shift one of these over, technically you could just move the shifter out. That's what this plate is for. So let's say you're in the bottom, you know, you move that over, then you can't kick it out of that groove. Or, you know, I don't know that I can do it with the, but otherwise it'll come up through there when you go to technically your lower gears because you're pivoting about that. And then when you shift left, right, then it, you can't pop it out of gear that way. So see if I can slip this baby on there. Well, there you have it. We've got high, or low and high, and then reverse, one, and two. So she's all good, back together. Um, next thing that I work on this tractor, I guess we'll put the crank back in, get that first reduction gear cover on. Um, I still can't get an engine kit for this tractor, out of stock everywhere. So there's only so much I can do, so that's why I'm kind of slow on videos right now because nothing's really pressing. Um, I, I may have somebody that can get me a, a block gasket so I can at least get the block on and, you know, a bunch of other pieces. But, um, yeah, and unfortunately it is what it is. I got the radiator I can put together, so I might do a video on that soon. Still working on our big 7400. It's a mess. Um, I, I broke even more on that while trying to fix it and now waiting for other parts on that. So, well, really look forward to getting this back together at some point. You know, hay season's coming around and get busy and things like that. So, um, got a lot of work trips and things lined up. Anyway, enough blabbering. You all have a good day. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think, if you learned anything. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video.